Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 18.2 beta 3 and public beta 2 released earlier this week. And there's even more to talk about since the iOS 18.2 beta 3 is out. What's new video. We'll talk about new features and changes as well as some Apple news and the overall experience. I've been using it full time on the 16 pro max, and we'll talk about your experience based off the YouTube community poll where at the time of this video, there's over 18,000 votes and 190 comments. I've gone over every comment to determine what the overall experience is like for for everyone. So be sure to stick around toward the end of the video where we'll go over some of those comments as well. But the first thing has to do with emoji. Every year we get new emoji. Thanks to the Unicode consortium. They sort of set up a standard of what to expect next. And this week they released the next set of emoji that will be added to iOS and other platforms. It includes eight different emoji. You can see them here and then Apple can sort of interpret this how they want. And it, added things such as this distorted face an apple core bigfoot or hairy creature orca trombone landslide and treasure chest and we could see more by the time this releases it could release by the end of the year or sometime early next year but this is what we can expect next and of course we have gen moji coming up so we can create our own as well Apple this week updated the app store connect app. This is if you want to publish your app onto iOS or iPad or Mac, and you can track important status updates in one place. And they've changed the UI overall. You can manage your apps across platforms, promote your app, manage test flight builds and testers and much more. It has a new interface. It's been updated. And if you haven't updated it already, I definitely would recommend doing that as it's been completely updated. Apple music classical also got a major update that was missing for quite some time. Now it supports CarPlay and Siri. I'm not sure why it wasn't there to begin with, but it now is supported and you can use it within CarPlay. Now there's something that I was very surprised to find out this week, and it has to do with the Apple watch. There is a huge battery health issue. If you're running the betas, now it could be just a bug or it could be a major problem that they're having and it's causing battery degradation. Now, if you're running the latest betas on watch OS, so we'll go to our settings, we'll go down to general. And if you're running the latest betas with beta two, 11.2 beta two, if you have this after installing it and it reboots, it seems that many people's battery health has significantly degraded. If we go back to battery here, you can see that mine actually did that. And I wasn't aware of this until someone asked me on Twitter or X, if we scroll down here, you can see battery health. And if we scroll further, it's down to 95%. Now this is odd because my Apple watch ultra from last year hasn't degraded at all. In fact, it's still at 100%. And the one before that, the Apple watch ultra one never really dropped either. So if this actually dropped, some people are seeing it down to 90%. This is probably a pretty big bug. I would imagine that it's just a bug where it dropped for some reason, it recalculated it wrong. And it seems like it may be carrying over to iOS. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but 95%, I would be very surprised if it lost 5% in a couple of months since the other one hasn't lost it at all. So I just wanted to make you aware of that and let you know how it's going with this as it's very surprising once you first see this and many people are experiencing the same thing. So don't be too concerned unless it sticks around for the next few betas. Definitely report it in the feedback app on your iPhone as well. So Apple can take a look at it if you haven't done that already. Now there was a story this week that carried across from the past couple of weeks where phones were rebooting for those that were actually trying to get into someone's phone, whether that was for a legal case or another reason. And it looked like phones were rebooting after a few days or so when people were trying to get into them. It turns out after sort of looking over this for the past week or so, if an iPhone is not touched for 72 hours, it will reboot as a security precaution, making it much more difficult to break into and unlock. So this is great. If you have your phone, maybe not used for a few days and you just want to make sure it's secure. It's apparently just rebooting itself, making it more difficult to do that. So that's something that's was added in iOS 18. It seems and Apple just never mentioned it. Now, as far as new features this week, I did want to mention one that I've talked about before, and then we'll get into a bunch of new ones. But if we go down to where we have sound and haptics, scroll to the bottom, we have volume limit. Volume limit allows you to limit the maximum volume of the speaker out of the bottom of the phone. This was added in earlier betas. It's not in iOS 18, but it is available in this one. And then you can set the maximum limit just maybe to save the speaker or save your hearing altogether. Unfortunately, it's not available for different parental controls yet. Maybe they'll add that in the future, but it is here if you want to use that. 
Within Safari, we have an update. If we tap on edit on the main screen or start page, we have some new background images we can use. So new wallpapers have been added directly by Apple. So they updated a few. I'm not sure why we're not getting more for the iPhone itself, but we're getting them at least for Safari. So you can see they're downloading now. So I'm not sure how long they'll take. They've been downloading for a little while, but we do have some new ones if you want to use those. So there we go. That one finally worked. And now we have a nice new wallpaper there if we want to use it. So it did take a few minutes to sort of work on its own for whatever reason. But now if I want to change it to this one, I can change it and then utilize that wallpaper. On the iPad, Apple has added the ability to change the menu now on the TV app. We could do this before with the previous version on music. Now we can do this in TV. Tap the little icon in the upper left. Now we've got a menu bar along the top. We can press and hold and add more things to it if we want. Maybe TV shows and movies. So press and hold. We can drag it up here, change it around however we'd like. Maybe we want download it up there. We can go on to the top, drag it up there and just slide back and forth through the menu. So they're updating all the apps like that. I'm not sure why it wasn't there with the initial launch of iPad OS 18, but it looks like they're filling in the rest of the gaps where they were missing in different apps. Now, many people, the first time they go in and maybe Shazam a song, press on Shazam, it's listening to music and we'll let it listen to a song here. And when it recognizes a song, press on it, you can see what it is, tap on it, and it will open up into a new screen. Some people are seeing a new splash screen with this that says, welcome to music recognition. I didn't have it myself, but it says, revisit your favorite discoveries, never lose your friends and musical memories. If we go back into this, press and hold on the Shazam option, tap history. If we go in, there's a new option now where you can change location and find the location where you recognize the song. So you can go into your settings in the upper left, go to location, and then enable that location if you're using it. So you don't have to have this, you can disable it if you want, but it is a new option. And if we go back in, maybe go into this song, scroll to the bottom, it will actually give you the location if it's available. So it will let you know where you last heard that song. If we go into Apple Music, there's an update where if you're maybe searching for something, a song, and you go to play it and it was within a box set that was previously maybe a CD box set, it will let you know the songs that were located on each disc. So you'll see disc one, disc two disc three and whatever you have there. So if you have a box set of any music, you'll then see it there. Now there's a lot of releases that happened this week. One of them had to do with new AirPods and we had new AirPods updates that I talked about in a previous video where I did a video on what's new, but Apple only updated the AirPods Pro 2 with both lightning and USB-C as well as AirPods 4 and AirPods 4 with active noise cancellation. They have two different versions, 7B20 and 7B21. Apple says it's only for bug fixes and other improvements, but it seems to have helped a lot of people. Some people had issues when they were using them, they would just disconnect. It seems to have fixed that. It also fixed an issue where sort of the overall bit rate would degrade when on a phone call or it would just disconnect. And it also seems to be much better with noise cancellation. So it looks like that's been out for a few days now. If it hasn't updated yet, just place them nearby after connecting them to your phone, or you can plug them in directly and they should update on their own. There's no button to do that just yet. We had a bunch of software updates as well with Final Cut Pro 11, Logic Pro 11.1, and quite a few other updates with iMovie and more. Of course, many of us are looking forward to iOS 18.2, but before that, it's possible we could see an iOS 18.1.1. We don't know if Apple's going to release this, as it could be a few weeks away until we see iOS 18.2, but iOS 18.1.1, if they do release it, would fix bugs and add security updates. So it's possible we could have that this week. Last year, we had a similar version as well. However, we could see iOS 18.2 beta 4 as soon as the 18th. It looks like we're on a weekly schedule at this point, so maybe we'll have beta 4 on the 18th, possibly the RC on the 25th, and then maybe the public release on the 2nd. However, Mac Rumors believes that we could have the public release on the 9th. If that's the case, we can expect the RC on the 2nd, maybe beta 5 on the 25th, beta 4 on the 18th, and that will hopefully be the rollout. Then we'll move on to iOS 18.3, maybe we'll have the first, possibly the second beta, and then we won't have anything usually until mid-January. So that's typically how Apple rolls those out. And of course, we'll have the next set of Apple intelligence features with iOS 18.3 as well. So what we can expect exactly, we don't know, possibly updated Siri 2.0 or something else. But with iOS 18.2, we get Genmoji and Image Playground. And I haven't really used Image Playground too much as it's just very cartoony. It's not my favorite compared to some others that are out there with what Google has, what 
OpenAI has and others. But let me know what you're thinking of it so far. Now, when it comes to bug fixes and improvements, well, some people say that iOS 18.2 is significantly better. Some say it's significantly worse. It really depends on what you're doing with it. If you're just using it regularly and you don't have Apple intelligence enabled just yet, whether that's due to your country or they haven't accepted you for Gen Moji and Image Playground yet, it seems like it's a much better update. However, if you're using features with Image Playground, Gen Moji, Apple AI, visual intelligence, there's definitely some battery degradation and it seems to use a ton of power. So it's something that's using a lot more power and generating a lot more heat than many people have expected. But if you don't have those, it seems to be a very solid update. However, I did want to mention some bugs that we've been having where iOS 18.1 still has that touch bug. Many people message me almost daily messaging me saying that they have this issue and it's with or without a screen protector. They haven't fixed it, of course, and maybe that's why we need an iOS 18.1.1. However, iOS 18.2 definitely has its set of bugs. For example, some people are saying that the microphone is turning on for no reason, and many people can't turn it off without rebooting. They'll see it active in the top here, and the microphone's just active all the time. So if I turn on Shazam, you'll see the microphone goes active. We get an orange dot, which is in kind of an odd place right now, but it's listening for a song, but it does let you know that we actually have the microphone active. You turn it off, it should deactivate the microphone. That's just to let you know that it's active or not. So that's something that many people are seeing. Also, another issue people are seeing is if we go into photos and maybe we want to go into our editing options and go to cleanup. Some people are saying it takes a very long time or doesn't download at all. You'll see it says preparing cleanup for whatever reason it's taking forever and I have used it since. There we go. Then we can maybe tap on this item here or let's try that. Highlight it. It didn't recognize that I want the whole device. It didn't really do anything. So can do that again, see if it recognizes it. There we go. See what it does when it gets rid of it. And it's okay. It's not great, but it's doing an okay job, but many people are not able to use it as it's not installing properly. So for whatever reason, that seems to be a bug for a lot of people. I think the number one issue I'm seeing from people is that if you go into the app store and you go to update your apps, so maybe you go to your name in the upper right. And if you scroll down and you go to update an app, many people are having this crash. I haven't seen this myself, but many people are saying it just crashes overall. So let me know if you're still experiencing that as well. Some people have said that once you go into messages, if you go into your emoji keyboard, stickers are missing for some people. However, I find that if you turn stickers off and turn it back on in settings, it seems to fix that issue. Many people are reporting that sometimes scrolling just stops. So maybe you're scrolling through something, it just crashes or locks up altogether. I find that happens in specific apps, maybe Discord or Telegram. Another issue I'm having specifically has to do with voice dictation. Again, if we go back in, this is a new note. We're talking using voice dictation. And sometimes this just doesn't work. I'll hit the button. It doesn't record my voice doesn't work at all. So I'll have to try it again. And it typically does that when I'm using AirPods. So there's some odd issue there. Some others have said that charging isn't working using the cable. So if you're using a cable and it's not charging, you can reboot and that will typically fix it. But if you do have a cable where it's not working properly and you have lightning, make sure you don't have anything in here where sometimes there's just stuff in there and the cable isn't seating properly and charging the phone. So if you want to remove that, you can, but be very careful as there's little tiny pins inside of there and you don't want to hit any of those or damage them. So if you do have anything in there though, that will cause that issue. And then battery usage seems to be incorrect. We talked about that a little bit with WatchOS 11.1, but in general, battery life on the phone seems to be a little off. Sometimes I'll get through the day no problem and I'll have a ton of battery life left. The next day I'll have no battery life, not get through the day, but the overall hours don't seem to change too much in the overall statistics. However, when it comes to battery life, let's take a look at it. And this is thanks to Cameron on his iPhone 16 Pro Max with 100% battery health. You'll see he had, well, about 50% of his battery left with four hours and 24 minutes of screen active time, 40 minutes of screen idle time. On another day, six hours and 58 minutes of screen active time, 42 minutes of screen idle time, using about 70 five to 80% battery life. So overall it's doing pretty well for him with iOS 18.1. When it comes to iOS 18.2, well, yesterday I had terrible battery life. I was down to 8% before I went to bed. If I go into battery, 
Under battery health, I have 50 cycles with 100% battery capacity. You can see all of the other details here with coconut battery for additional details. That's just a Mac app that you can download on your Mac outside the app store. And if we take a look at the overall battery usage yesterday, I had four hours and 39 minutes of screen active time at seven hours and seven minutes of screen idle time. And I was down to about eight or 9% by the time I went to bed. You'll see it though. It doesn't say that I've used that much today. I have four hours and 44 minutes of screen active time and I'm down to 42%. I think this is off by quite a bit right now. And I hope that's really what's happening with the Apple watch. So I definitely think there's something odd going on there. Maybe they're fixing it, making it more accurate and hopefully changing the graph a little bit. When it comes to overall performance, well, if you're on the latest beta, iOS 18.2 beta 3 or public beta 2, it seems like it's very smooth most of the time. Other than sometimes the scrolling locking up, I haven't had any issues, but I have heard from some people that say it seems to be a little bit choppy for them. That could be on older devices, but on the iPhone 11 with the same version, it seems to be okay with scrolling. Of course, we don't have ProMotion there, but if we go in, go to home here, Things seem to load fine, scrolling is fine, loading games is fine, and it seems to be pretty decent overall. When it comes to overall heat, well, like I said, if you're not using Apple Intelligence, it seems to be staying nice and cool. In fact, this is nice and cool for me this time, more so than last week. So let's go ahead and take a look. On iOS 18.2 Beta 3 on a 16 Pro Max, we're at about 31.8 or 32 degrees Celsius. And on an iPhone 16 Pro Max with iOS 18.1, we're at about 27.5 degrees Celsius. So overall staying nice and cool, I think compared to what we had before, where both of them sometimes would get really hot, especially running Apple intelligence with Genmoji and things like that. For me, it's been better. I know that's not the case for everyone though. As far as benchmarks, let's go ahead and take a look and see if it's improved at all. From left to right, we have the iPhone 16 Pro Max running iOS 18.1, then the iPhone 11 running iOS 18.2 beta three and iPhone 16 Pro Max running iOS 18.2 beta 3 or public beta 2. iOS 18.1 definitely has the best single and multi-core score and compared with earlier this week you'll see here on the 16 Pro Max we have a little bit higher single core score but a little bit lower multi-core score. I expect these to go up typically by the time the public releases out but they're definitely within the margin of error so they seem to be pretty good overall. So in general this should just give you an idea of what to expect and something to compare your own phones with. When it comes to your experience with these updates let's take a look at some of your comments. Bagheera394 said 17.7.1 is so stable I can't give it up yet on an iPhone 13. Blind Gordy said I am on iOS 18.1 on my iPhone 15 Pro Max. Battery life is great considering my usage and Apple intelligence does exactly what I need it to do for me. One thing though, I wonder is if others haven't had an issue with their phone respringing while connected to AC power through either electrical mains or a power bank. In my case, it has been through a power bank a few times and I don't know why it's doing that. It's not happening all the time, but it happens every so often. And this is the only update where it has occurred for me. Otherwise, everything is going swimmingly. Idemian 20 said 18.1 on 16 Pro Max battery life over 10 hours of social media and games. The only issue I have is with the screen. Some parts of the screen does not respond at first press. I have to touch multiple times for a reaction. King Tech HD said iPhone 16 Pro Max on 18.2 beta 3 works great. Have it on my 15 Pro as well. No issues so far. F one or 14 NN said iOS 18.2 beta three on iPhone 15 pro max really have to say that battery life and performance improved a lot. Once again, I broke my highest Geekbench score. Battery life is good, getting about four to six hours with 60 to 70% of use. Overall, pretty decent. Rad Puppies said 18.2 beta three needs some work. The app store will crash randomly when you're trying to update apps or update really, really, really slowly. If you try to update more than one app at a time, hopefully beta four releases soon. iPhone 15 pro max icon icon says iOS 18.2 beta three battery life is slightly better than beta two and significantly better than 18.1. So I'm looking forward to many of the new updates coming out and hopefully making the phone much more stable. Definitely. I really hope they fix the battery issue with battery health on the Apple watch with watch OS 11.2 beta three. Hopefully maybe it will jump back up and it's just a miscalculation and I would love to see some new battery statistics as well. We won't get some new products probably from Apple until probably around March or so of next year. And that's pretty typical. We could see some surprises here and there and hopefully some new features as well. And so that's everything with iOS 18.1 and iOS 18.2 beta three. 
Let me know how it's going for you as far as the overall experience and what you're looking most forward to or what features you want Apple to add the most. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.